Welcome back. A lot of good information in the first part that was released. Um, just wanted to touch base on something and then we could move forward from it in this yeah. second part. We talked a lot about your numbers last time and it was just overall revenue. Can we kind of break that down and talk about what your profit margins are? And then if you have multiple services or post construction or move in, move out, deep clean, so stuff like that. If those vary, if you could just touch on those as well. So we can go based off of, let's go based off of last year's numbers. Okay. Um, the 423. Uh, 423,000 in total revenue that you did last year. What were your overall, what was your gross profit? And then what was net after you paid everybody out? Sure. Um, let me pull up, I'm trying to pull up my um, QuickBooks. Gross profit ended up being um, 422,954. Um, that was overall revenue. Yeah, that was overall revenue. And I just wanted to include that we sold some um like holiday scented products towards the end of the year. Okay. So that's that's also included in that number. What would you roughly guesstimate? Or if you have an exact number, what would you say the products were? The products were for about two thousand. So Okay. Not a huge difference. It didn't make a huge difference in our gross uh, revenue. Um, so yeah, so four twenty two nine fifty four, and then after paying all of the gazillion expenses we have, um, let's see. My net income. I also purchased a card last year. My net income at the end of the year was sixteen thousand, um, and it could have technically been. 36,000 but I put a down payment on a car so um but yeah my net my net income ended up being 16,184 Let's break that down then the 423 sure. what are you how do you pay your providers your uh independent contractors are you they're percentage based Yeah they're percentage based so most of them are 60% I have two who are at 65 cuz they've been with us like from the beginning um but most of them are at 60% and now when I start contractors I start them at 55% um I've made some adjustments along the way but yeah most of them are at 60% so that's like the average cuz I can actually see the line items for so for independent contractor label labor i had 297 235 that was spent last year okay and then after the 297 what else were you you're paying your softwares that you're using quickbooks booking yeah so we strike mm -hmm. fees advertising campaigns um that's like a huge uh chunk um background checks for some hiring that i did um customer appreciation gifts, um, let's see, website maintenance. That's a huge cost as well because of the SEO team. It seems like you're just trying to dump all the money back into the business. And and in, in the money that you paid out, you also paid out your salary as well. So last year, I didn't pay myself. I only paid, uh, I started paying myself this year in January. Okay. So for people who are going to be listening or who are listening to this, they're going to say 423 overall and then 16 net might scare them. But talk us through a little bit why, because I understand why that number is the way it is. Yeah. Um, so can you just talk us through and, and explain why? why we're at that such a low sure i will so eyes. i will yeah i will say this is not probably the norm being that i put a twenty thousand dollar payment on a car using some of this so that's like no most people are not doing that um 
in their operating business. But I I wanted to put my um the main reason I purchased my car under my business is for tax deduction. Um, because the previous year I had to pay so much in taxes, being that we had um profited so much, um, grow so much, and I didn't have a lot of expenses to deduct. So the following year, I when I needed it, when I knew I was going to need a car, I went ahead and put it under my business. So that'll be like I'm able to write off the full value of the car every year when I file my taxes. So that twenty thousand is a huge chunk out of our profits technically. Sure. Um so it technically would have been thirty six thousand. Um, and then some, so some of our biggest costs, um, I'll just kind of go through some of them based off of my profit and loss statement for last year. Um, the independent contractor labor, like I said, was 297, that's almost $300,000. Um, the website maintenance, um, that's including all of my, uh, monthly fees, domain hosting plus SEO, which is pricey. Um, but it pri- SEO is not a permanent expense, so I can technically eliminate that expense at any time. Um, another big uh, cost is Stripe fees. Um, so obviously, the more you gross, um, the more Stripe is going to, um, their value is going to just be higher because they get a percentage of each transaction. Right. So my Stripe fees were over $13,000. Um, let's see what else is big here. Federal taxes um, that I ended up paying for the previous year. Uh, let's see. The rest are like expenses that are under like two thousand dollars. So nothing. Well, not much. Major, yeah. Basic things, softwares and X Y Z, just minuscule things, but that you need to run a business. Yeah. Let's go a little bit back to the SEO. Sure. If you don't mind sharing you don't have to what are you paying monthly or yearly for that total seo cost sure sure so i'm paying right now i'm paying monthly 1500 okay um which you know i learned is like the average because i did you know kind of do some research before picking a team and looking at the average cost and that was like around the average of what the good companies were charging for people who aren't so well versed with seo it's it's not like paid ads, right? It's not like paying Facebook for ads, Yelp or Google. If you right. stop paying for SEO, it will not drop your rank on Google immediately. It will depend on several factors, one being competition in the area mm-hmm. and how hard a competitor is pushing their SEO services and If they have a good team or let's say an equivalent team to the one that you're using, now if they're paying $2,000 a month or $2,500 or $3,000 and you stopped paying, well, then within a couple months, you would definitely see your ranking drop for those keywords. Mm -hmm. With that being said, you don't necessarily need to cut out SEO completely, but you can reduce your budget to a maintenance level. Yeah. And again, all depending on competition and how much people are willing to pay to fight for that top spot in your area. So it kind of goes a little hand in hand, but again, it's not, if you stop paying, it's not like you're going to lose out on your ranking and it's not like your customers are going to stop coming. It would just, Let's say the keyword is going to be made services in DC and you are one of one first page, first result underneath all the ads Um, because the ads are always going to be on top. Those are the people who are willing to spend the big money to to be at the top. Um, And that's just kind of how that goes. But if, if you stop paying and your competitors start creeping up, you're just going to start jumping down. It's not going to be completely removed. You're just going to be moved down. Yeah. Moved down. And then if you decide to start paying more or increase your budget again, well, then you could fight your way back to the top. And again, you need a strong domain authority. 
So your website domain authority is ranked on 100. The closer you get to that 100, the better and easier chance you have to rank quicker. So yeah. a website basically starts under 10, close to one. Um, and the more links you have, the more pages. There's just so much that goes in the SEO. It's not really <laughs> yeah. a it's, one, yeah, it's, one shop fits, one stop fits all. It's it's a lot. It's a lot. And, they, and that like they've done a lot for me. Um, you know, writing blog posts, um, you know, they they've created a lot of extra pages on my, you know, website that I just didn't have time to do. Um, so they, they've done a significant amount of work and I can honestly say I'm probably in a place now where I don't necessarily need to have like a monthly, you know, subscription. Um, but they have done a lot of website maintenance for me. Um, you know, a lot of blog posts, um, just a lot of like putting the business, um, it's online presence, like everywhere they could possibly put it. Um, <clears throat> And I also forgot to mention, I um, hadn't scrolled up there. I spent 23000 in advertising last year. So that was another huge expense. And that was basically paid ads. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Google, local service ads, um, uh, regular Google ads we use, Facebook um, ads, Nextdoor ads. Um, trying to think if we have any ads anywhere else. That's mainly. Yeah, that's mainly our prime platform. And Google Local Service Ads was probably the most expensive one, um, which is what why would, I don't, I don't what use would it you anymore. say in in your area at the time when you are you you said you stopped running service ads or are you still doing them? We stopped running Google LSA. We okay. we run regular Google ads, which is like clicks. Um, sure. LSA allowed people to call us directly through them. Right. Um, so they were providing like a certain amount of ads. And I think the cost per lead was, it just kept increasing. Like it, it may have started off at maybe like 21. And then like, I feel like by the time I would calculate the amount of leads we had per month and the total amount I spent, it was like almost like 50 bucks a lead, which is not worth it in my opinion, unless the cleaning is like a thousand dollars, which that doesn't happen often. Um, and so again, that's... <laughs> That's just a lead. That's not. Yeah, that's, that's not. You closing the lead. <laughs> yeah, you got to convert them. You got to make sure they book and everything yes. goes smoothly, no damage, and and all that. And then, if what would you say at your most successful stretch? What were you converting out of ten on those leads? Uh -huh. There was a point in time where we were literally converting like most of the leads that came in. And then I just I, like if we if there was 10 that came in, we would have we would convert at least eight of them. But they were better quality at one point. Um, now I find it's hard to convert them. It's hard to even get to that rate of like eight out of 10 because most people want like a very cheap service. They want to pay like a hundred bucks for a cleaning. Um, so they don't end up booking with us, which is fine. But it's. Like I paid for that lead regardless if they book with us or not. And I don't have anything to offer them for a hundred bucks. Like even our like one bedroom, one bath, um, basic cleaning is like 139. And for people who are like pretty much on like a, like a budget or like looking for more budget friendly prices, we have our hourly service. And even that's a minimum of 180. So Someone calling wanting to pay $100 or less is just not possible to convert them. All right. For all you folks listening in, if you ever see ads for Handy or <laughs> any other of those Dazzling. major, major, major companies that are showing you ads for, you know, $19 for your first cleaning for two hours, the reason that is, is because they have so much money to spend on advertising that they want to get you hooked for that yep. low, low, low price of 20 bucks in hopes of you turning into a recurring customer like yeah. we spoke about in part one. As long as that happens and you 
I mean, I'm just ballparking. I wouldn't think it would be the first two, three cleanings, but after that first cleaning, it's not going to be 20 bucks. It'll be right. closer to your numbers or yep. maybe slightly lower, maybe slightly higher. Yeah. Um, depends on the area. But they are hoping that you sign up for that recurring service. And by the fourth or fifth service, that's where they hit their break even yeah. for, for yeah. that lead for you becoming that customer. Um, it's not a bad thing. I'm not knocking their their business, but there is a reason why you see those things. As a consumer, you see those things and you wonder if you're shopping around for price and you're calling family-owned home services and they're telling you their prices, there is a reason why they are those prices is because they factor in all their costs up front and let's face it mom and pop individual owned businesses they don't have millions of dollars in in revenue to spend on advertising to get you as cheap as they don't care how many people click as long as somebody clicks and somebody stays for yep. a couple months they'll break even and and that's all that really is to that uh so <laughs> next time you see those there's that, if, and you're wondering how the heck they could pull that off. It's because they got all that funding and they now make it work somehow. Yep. And there's a reason why their reviews might be all over the place. <laughs> right. From a one to five, just depends on the customer and the type of work that was done. There's a lot of different factors. And their their hiring process might not be as thorough as a family-owned business right you know, they will do a background check but all the other steps that they take to see to factor in like i don't know if you do this yourself but you do it after because you mentioned it in part one um where when you're scheduling your providers you're making sure that where they service is not far past or you know for this example, we'll say they're not further than 20 miles from where they're servicing. When they, yeah, yeah. And, and with other businesses like that, they're in a mass hiring spree because if they get this ad up and people are, people are booking, okay. they just want to make sure they have enough cleaners to get, <laughs> to get those somebody. jobs done yeah. and get those people, <laughs> you know, signed up for recurring and, and they'll filter out the bad ones over time. But Again, there's there's reasons why you see those ads and you might think I can't compete with them. You definitely can. Yeah. Because they don't last long and customers tend to realize exactly what I was yeah. about to say. You'll you'll real date that that's that customer that will be like, I just had a horrid experience prior to. That's why I'm looking, you know, that's why I'm shopping around to see like, why is your price the way it is? They give you a try and then they go to somebody else, you know, yep. they, might, they might be doing a couple one-time cleans just to see who the best one is before they lock down that recurring. And then they come back to you and they're like, now I see the value. Now I see why you're, you price the way you price. Yep. Absolutely. With competition in mind you know, we're on the subject. How are you handling that? I know that we've been talking a lot about numbers and, and just comparative things, but in the industry, there's always going to be competition. In every industry, yes. there's competition. Yeah. In life, there's competition. But with new competition and existing competition, how are you handling that? Um, so to be honest, like I never, we never really had to deal with, I guess, because even though there's like a gazillion cleaning companies in this area, um, the demand is high. Um, and especially if you're servicing, um, I think the good thing about us is there are some locations that we service that there just maybe aren't as many cleaning, um, companies out there. Um, so 
this market, like the Washington, D.C. metro area, Baltimore metro area, the demand is high for house cleaning services. Like it's it's a it's an area where people work a lot. Um, people have families and they just don't have time to clean their homes, um, especially in the town where I live. Like the houses are huge because you have, you know, like double, you know, two parents and you maybe have three to four kids. You may have extended family members that live there, an aunt or a grandmother or something. Um, so people have big houses, so they're not paying a hundred dollars. Um, and both parents are typically working, so they have double income. Um, so they can afford, you know, monthly or biweekly cleanings to keep their home clean. Um, so the demand is high here, which is, you know, a, a bonus. Um, and then it's like once you, you know, once I tell people like once you kind of build a reputation and you have the reviews to speak to your reputation, um, customers see that. So they may, if they Google, you know, a cleaning service near me and three companies show up, including No More Dust Made Services, they're going to go through all of those reviews and they're going to see in our company, they're going to see not only good reviews, but they're going to see my response to the review. If there's a bad review, they're also going to see my response to that review and how I handle it and why they may have been, why the customer could be lying or maybe there was some miscommunication on somebody's end. If it was our fault, you know, they can see my response, taking accountability. And like, that means a lot to people. So uh, people call us all the time. And they're like, yeah, I read your reviews. I'm ready to book. Um, the reviews make them feel like they can trust us and that we're a quality company. Even if our prices may be a little bit more than the next company, um, they feel like they can trust us coming into their house. Um, they can trust us cleaning without them being home. There's tons of customers that book us for the first time and they're not even home. You know, they'll leave a key to even trust a stranger um, that you've never met to clean your house while you're at work. Um, that says a lot about our reputation and what they are able to like gauge online with how, you know, they can trust us and how trustworthy we are um, and that we'll do the job and we'll do it well. So I think that that alone kind of um, doesn't, that alone makes us not really have to experience like a lot of competition. Like I don't ever feel like I have to put out more sales or offer, you know, lower prices to get customers because the quality and our reputation online speaks for itself. And that goes to my point that we were talking about in the first part, um, why you should open all those social pages and yes. open paid, like, even if it's not a social site, but it's a review gathering site. Yeah. It is huge because you don't know where a customer will stumble upon your business. And the more, think of it like realtors in a small town with park benches and yeah. that's how they advertise or shopping carts in, in, a, in a store. Um, you have one shopping cart or two or one park bench or two on maybe the busiest intersection, I'm sure you'll do, you'll get a good amount of eyes. But what about if it doesn't cost you anything to open up or get more park benches? That's the same thing. As right. many eyes as you can to get on, on your, your business, business mm -hmm. especially if it's free, you know, I get more questions in my head when I talk to business owners when they say you know I just I don't see a need for it and it's like I just want to talk me through that thought process yeah. because I just <laughs> I genuinely want to know why yeah. you think that way and it's <clears throat> I don't want to say it's my job to tell them but I feel like I should just because it will help that business so much more um Maybe. Yeah, I don't I don't think a lot of people truly understand like the importance of online presence. Um to me you kind of have to be a little tech savvy and you kind of have to sure. understand like how algorithms work and all of that. And if you don't, that's where you probably like, "Oh, I don't need this. We don't use that." 
um, you don't really understand that like the value in like having an online presence and being the first eight results, whether it's your Instagram page or your Facebook page or your website or like even our website, there's like certain pages on our website that show up separately in results. You know what I mean? So um, I think if you if you maybe if you don't understand how um, ranking and algorithms work, then you probably won't care about what platforms you're using and which ones you aren't. Sure. And with that too, it's, you're not necessarily downloading TikTok to do, you know, <laughs> viral dances with your, your right, right, staff right, right. Or, or your providers. It's not, it's not about that. It's not about so much, um, going viral, for your cleaning service. If that's a goal for you, by all means, do that. Yeah. But if you think that that's what you should be doing, not necessarily. If you open up an Instagram account, that's, again, that's not a review collecting site. But if you're just posting, you know, provider appreciation posts from customers, and then also pro like showcasing a screenshot of your reviews, every couple of days or once a week. Again, it just shows those eyes that have stumbled upon your business, how they great you say. truly are and, and what you have accomplished. So your leadership style <laughs> is you're handling a bunch of moving parts, obviously, as a business owner and would you say your leadership style is the same with your VA than it is with your providers? Or would you say it's a little different? Um, that's a good question. I would say... I would say I'm a little... So... I give my VA more instructions than I do the cleaners, being that they're contractors um, and they, you know, for the most part, they know what to do. Um, I stay on top of my cleaners more than I stay on top of my VA um, because her work is a little less like, what's the word I want to use? Like if I, if I give her instructions one time, you know, She'll take the instructions, she'll do it, and I don't have to worry about it again. Um, my cleaners, because they're, you know, they're they're moving. Once they get started, they're moving. They may have two to three cleanings. They're driving to different locations. They have to review their GPS. They, they have all these responsibilities to make the day go smooth. Um, if it's a new customer, they have to take pictures. If there's, you know, notes in the booking, they have to look at that before they start the cleaning. Um, and they just tend to forget. Um, you know, I make a joke that sometimes like I think my cleaners wake up and like act like today is their first day of work because I have to constantly repeat the same instructions like over and over throughout the week. Um, so I think I, I stay on them a little a little bit more because I know that one slip up can affect that customer experience. And that's more of a priority for me than if my um, VA maybe didn't text the customer today when she was supposed to text them and she's just going to text them tomorrow. It doesn't really affect anything major. Um, so I would say like my, for the most part, once my VA was like trained and I felt confident that she could do the work, I was completely hands-off. Like I'm a hands-off person. Um, I don't want to micromanage you because I hate to be micromanaged and me having been in a workforce, um, you know, for so long, I know what it feels like to work under somebody who's just on you 24 seven. So I never, ever want, you know, my VA to feel that way. Um, and she, she's a pretty independent worker. She, I don't really have many issues um, with her. So I just, I don't feel like I have to be as involved and on top of her as I am with the cleaners. The cleaners though, their instructions are pretty straightforward. Um, I just have to constantly remind them. And that's something I accepted as, being the owner of a company, like it doesn't matter if you told them this last week, tell them again. <laughs> so better to um, tell them again before something happens than exactly having to review it after the fact. And now you're dealing with X amount of headaches on top. Yeah. Of and um, it's just as 
leadership in general, um, because this this is technically my third VA. Um, I had a previous VA, um, and then I brought on my current VA. So I had two VAs working at one point, and then um, my first VA, I had let him go, and I had hired another VA um, earlier this year, and she was with us for like three months, and she was okay. Um, but I I found that there was just a lot of mistakes with the two previous ones that I had. And, you know, I would get so frustrated about it. And I, I went to this conference this summer and they made this point that really like resonated with me that like, if your staff is like not getting it right and not doing things correctly, not doing things the way they're supposed to be, that means you need to become a better leader. Cause it's like, it's not their fault. It's something that I am, I must have lacked in my training and my communications with them. Um, it's it's something that I need to acknowledge and take accountability for. So um, I think I'm a good leader, but I want to be a great leader. So it's definitely like like a skill set that I am working hard on now on just trying to improve my leadership skills and um, knowing how to choose the right candidates, whether it's for a virtual assistant or, you know, a cleaning provider. Um, knowing how to choose the best candidates versus um, I think in my earlier, like when um, No More Dust Made Services was new, you know, I would pick people because they seemed nice. And it was like, at the end of the day, they weren't qualified. You know what right. I mean? So it was like, I'm not a good leader if I can't choose qualified, you know, quality people. Um, so it's, it's definitely an area that I am constantly trying to improve constantly educating myself on, um, constantly trying to learn new ways to manage people because that is just the most challenging part of this business is managing people. I got to state this. Um, <laughs> with your success and just the way you keep saying how you're adapting and you're always learning, you have not let the success go to your head and let you be complacent with where you are. Because a lot of people would be like, yeah, I hit a million in three and a half years, over a million in three and a half years in revenue. Clearly, I know what the hell I'm doing. I'm doing everything right. You know, it's like, I could step back. We're good. We're fine. Like, I'm just, if I could do that now, then everything's just going to blow up from here. Right. That's not how it works. <laughs> Hell no. That is not even close. Yeah. And and that just goes to show that with any business, you need to have that mindset where I guess the best analogy that I can think of sports related, it's like you're a rookie coming into mm -hmm. your uh your first season playing any sport, right? The ones that finally get to whatever league they're in the great ones are not complacent they know right. that they're always learning and adapting always the ones that maybe aren't complacent in the beginning but in a couple of years they do get complacent because after their rookie contract they get a big big old check and now they're paid Maybe they get complacent and they're out of the league in a couple of years, you know? So it just, you yep, don't best, want that to happen the, to your business. Absolutely. And that that's a really good um, example because, you know, think about like the, the best basketball players, the best football players, LeBron James is practicing hard every single day. It doesn't matter that he's at the top, that he's one of the best. He's practicing hard every single day and he's continuing to perfect his craft and continuing to learn strategies. Um, and this it's the same thing as a business owner. Like, and the thing is, I think I feel like the the hitting the seven figure mark, if anything, made me want to work harder. Cause it's like, look what you did with not even you weren't even giving a hundred percent really because you were working, you had other, you know, commitments to take care of. So it's like, imagine what I can do now knowing, you know, I've kind of, I've learned all the basics. And now if I give it 200% and I, you know, I incorporate this and I add that and I learn about this and that, and 
like the sky, like I said, the sky is truly the limit. Um, so if anything, I would say um, the hitting the seven figure mark did the total opposite of making me complacent. It's making me work harder now because it's like, you got a good thing going, like right. keep going. And this is, this is going to be even more amazing. And your point to how you said about LeBron training every day, there was a interview several years back and they were talking about his longevity and how he was able to stay and keep playing in the league. And he said, well, I learned it from another great Tom Brady and Tom Brady spent, I believe it was $2 million a year on just taking care of himself on his body with yes, I nutrition. Um, I believe half of that, that like what a million dollars was, was like in nutrition and, and other supplements and stuff like that. And then the other was in personal trainers and the team around him. So then he incorporated what Tom Brady did. And again, two, those two guys in their respective sports have been in the league the longest, almost out of anybody else ever. And still performing well. Yep. Still performing well. And it's all due to the fact that they reinvest in themselves. Yeah. To get better, to keep going. And that's exactly what you are doing with your revenue and not being like, okay, I made, you know, out of 423, I paid 297 out. I got all this extra money. I'm going to keep right. all that money to myself. Like, <laughs> I'm going to sit back and relax. <laughs> exactly. All right. Your business is gone in six months. There you go. You know, right. If, right. If, if you do something like that. So you and anybody else who, who does that and just, and I know Phil, Phil did that with King of Maids. That's how they grew so quickly. They didn't take any profit for themselves. They basically Perfect. dumped every single penny back into the business and and made sure it grew as quickly and as best as it could yeah under the circumstances so again competition will always be there yeah but it all matters on how you handle every aspect of your business everything plays a role in itself and and it ties in with every other thing yeah. if you are on top of it you will go so far you will so far, your yep. business will get so far ahead so quickly and and you will be so surprised with with that success with recruitment and training and and just developing i kind of want to piggyback off of your your sure. leadership style What's your approach to that with hiring employee, like your providers and then training them? Um, I know you already talked about checking in every day or with them and making sure they do certain things, but just talk, talk through that now. Sure. Um, so as far as hiring, I had initially started um, searching on Indeed, um, Craigslist, um, some like Facebook groups, like, um, mom's Facebook, I mean, yeah, mom's Facebook groups, neighborhood Facebook groups, um, next door. So my first few cleaners came from Indeed and, um, process, I would say my process is, is, has not changed much. I just maybe ask a lot more questions now, but, um, for the most part, I will have a phone screening with them. Um, that's like the first step. So I have a, an application on our website that's a couple different questions about, you know, the amount of experience that they have, um, what areas they service, if they have a vehicle, if they have a partner to work with, if they have their own cleaning supplies, like the bare minimum uh, requirements is on are on that application. So they complete that. If it looks like someone that, you know, could be a good fit, I'll schedule a phone screening with them like 15 minutes and just kind of talk through their cleaning experience. Um, if they're already cleaning, um, they're just looking for more jobs. That is actually my ideal cleaner. Um, <clears throat> it's hard to hire someone that doesn't have any other jobs, um, may not have experience yet um, because with ICs, you can't tell them what to do. 
Right. Um, you can lay out, these are the requirements, but I can't tell them what to do. So I tend to hire those who are already cleaning, may have already have their own cleaning business, and they're just looking for additional work. Um, those are the ones that typically work best for me. And then, so after I have that phone screening, I'll send them over like a packet. And the packet is like the IC agreement that lists everything. They need to read and understand that first. Um, because some people may see the 60% and they're like, oh no, that's that's too low, you know? <laughs> so I want to make sure before I even move forward with anything, you understand the terms of payment, how everything works, you know, your requirements, the reclean process, if you break something, all of those good things. Um, I also send them like a, a slide deck that I had created, like information about the company, our more our values and what we stand on. Um, the types of services we offer. So our main clean services, basic, deep, moving, cleaning is our main main services. Um, <clears throat> how to pay works. It's like an entire informational packet. Um, and then our cleaning checklist. So our cleaning checklist lists like the three main cleanings we have and then what tasks we complete in each room. So once I send them that, they have to review all of it. If they're good to go with that, then I schedule a test clean. So in my first two years, I was doing test cleans. Um, I would have them either come clean my house or a friend of mine. Um, and I would pay them like 20 bucks an hour or something. If it's like two hours, they get like 40 bucks. Um, as we start to got, get busier and I needed cleaners and I needed to onboard them quickly, I started assigning their test clean as one of our real cleanings, like a real customer. So if a customer booked like a one bedroom or a two bedroom, I would use that for a test clean and just pray <laughs> that it went well, being that this is technically a customer of mine. Right. Um, so, and and I've, I've never had any major issues with that either. So once they do the test clean, I confirm all as well. I used to actually attend the test cleans. Now I don't do that. I just don't have the time. Um, I'll usually just check with the customer and ask them how everything looks. Um, I require the cleaner who's doing a test clean to send before and after pictures. Everything looks good. I'll onboard them. So I'll add them to Booking Koala. Um, I'll run their background check. I'll send them, uh, we use clear checks. So I'll send them like, you know, information to fill out their information so that clear checks will send me back their information. And then, um, the sign, I send everything through like um, DocuSign so they can sign everything electronically. The IC agreement, I send them like a welcome letter that lists all everything I need from them, like their ID. Um, they got to fill out a um, W-9. Um, all of the forms that they have to fill out to onboard. And then once I get, get them set up and booking Koala, I'll try to briefly go over things with them. Most of them have, it's such an easy user-friendly um, platform that most of them didn't require any type of training um, to use it. So once they're set up, I start assigning them jobs based on, you know, where they live or where they said they wanted to work, um, their preference. Some of them want only one job a day, where some of them may want like three jobs a day. Um, and that's pretty much the process. Um, I've had most of my cleaners now I've had for at least two years, which is a good thing. That means they're happy here. <laughs> they like working here. Um, you mentioned something happy. earlier about the percentages when you send out to see, you know, if they're all right with the 60%. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had anybody say that they're unhappy with 60% and they want more? I've had one person want more and she, she wasn't even a good cleaner. So I'm not even sure why. I she just... Didn't <laughs> I, I wonder how can how can somebody say that it's not enough when you're getting over half of the job cost and you you just show up and do the work. You don't have to worry about finding exactly. the cleaner or the the homes. You don't have to worry had about to marketing. To her. That's why I had to explain to that one person that eventually didn't work out was that I'm spending money to get leads. So you don't have to spend that money to actually get the customer. I'm spending money to have an actual booking form for them to fill out to actually book the appointment. Like all of those website costs, insurance, um, everything I'm I'm paying for. And that's one of the main reasons why I moved from starting them at 60 to 55% because I learned quickly 
you know, all of the expenses that I had, you know, to pay for, if there were refunds, there was just a lot of things that I had to take care of um, with that 40%. So I was like, okay, I'm going to start them at 55%. So um, initially how it was set up was that they would start at 60%. And then after 10 five-star reviews, they would go up to 65. So that's how I have two people at 65. Um, the rest of them now, there's no, there's no incentive. Um, well, when I start somebody new, they start at 55 and if they have 10 five-star reviews, they go up to 60. So that's how majority of everyone is at 60 now. Um, but honestly, I would love to do 50, 50 because like I said, like, especially now that I've, I've hired my bookkeeper last year and I'm seeing like all of the expenses that are, that are incurring. I'm like, I get why some companies do 50-50. Um, you know, at first I thought I was like, oh, they're being greedy and they're the ones doing the manual work. You know, I'm not doing the manual labor. Let me give them a little bit more. But I totally get it now from like an operating expenses perspective. If you start, again, it's it's great to pay them as much as you would like to. I mm-hmm. want to say that emphasize as much as you would like to yeah because um again your business is only going to go so far if you're not also happy if you're not making some money out of it then why in the hell would anybody start a business you know exactly people consumers would say oh well you're just being greedy if if that were the fact then how many more businesses would either fail or succeed, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, there has to be give and take, you know? Yeah. And there's, and I, I think when I researched at one point, like the average profit margin for like most small businesses are like maybe like 10 to 12%. Um, So it's, it, it's always crazy to me when people think that like businesses are, profiting all this money and it's just like no they may have a very high gross amount but once those expenses clear um you know the the percentage of profit is not a gazillion dollars it's just that's right. just not realistic um and you you do want to make sure it's enough that all of the work that you're doing is actually worth it you're not just like you know, owning a company that's breaking even every year. Um, but it's, it's having a high profit margin is rare. Um, I probably Walmart or Amazon has a high profit margin, but as a small business, um, your profit margin is maybe 10 to 12% of what you're grossing. In. But that's, that's in all service or not service-based businesses, but all small businesses, mm-hmm. In general, if you're looking at, you know, a product and selling a product and you're only making a couple dollars profit afterwards, yeah. and that's not even including, you know, marketing, like that's if you get a free customer who right, just right, happen right, to right. land there. But if you're doing marketing and paid ads, how many products do you have to sell to just to make, make money? Call, call it, you know, 50 grand in, in a salary for yourself in a year, million product. Yeah. Depending on what you're selling. Um, and if, if you're going based off of those numbers that you said that 10 to 12 mm-hmm. service-based businesses gives you more room for that, that profit margin. Absolutely. If again, you are tracking all your expenses, breaking it down, and be willing to adapt to like yourself and make changes. You can grandfather in. And that's one thing. If, if you do go to change those percentages, I'm sure you would grandfather in the cleaners that you already have at those percentages. Like you said, you have two at 65. So you already grandfathered them in and you yeah. reduced the other ones. So going forward, if you, you know, if you look at trying to get to the 50-50, you're going to start them maybe at 45 and then after 10 five-star reviews, they'll hit 50. Right. And then you're just going to slowly increment downward towards that 50% mark <laughs> yeah. and your margins are going to get that much higher because yeah, 297, add another 10% to you. That's another 30 grand in profit that you added to yourself 
at the end of the year last yeah. year, you know? Yeah. So keep hammering that point of always adapt, make sure you're looking at everything and, and you will be successful partnerships and collaborations or did mm -hmm. were you, you wanted to say something? Um, no, I was just speaking to the, just the percentage profit margin. And then I had looking at like last year and like looking at where I am now, like year to date, like I've reduced a lot of those huge expenses from last year. Um, I have reduced them a lot, like, especially like marketing, I'm not spending as much as I was. Um, so I anticipate I'm going to have a bigger profit margin percentage this year, um, being that I've reduced my expenses and I'm not, you know, I'm not purchasing another car where I'm putting like a huge down payment or something. Um, so I think I can go beyond like the 10 to 12% um, this year. That's my, I, my projection. And to go back to another point, you said you have reduced your your marketing budget but if you all listening remember to part one her projection for this year was 500k to finish off the year and potentially more so it's going to be roughly seventy five thousand dollars more in revenue this year over last reduced marketing and has still got Increased customers revenue. coming in and and booking so it just because you reduce marketing doesn't mean you're necessarily going to lose customers and right, right. and and revenue um you just have to make sure you know where you're reducing and the effect that it'll it'll have i mean yeah. safe to say your seo has been so strong that with that reduction in marketing probably with the paid ads is is helping you keep those margins higher or get yeah. them higher and keep those customers coming in going back yeah. partnerships collaborations mm -hmm. do you have any um with you know whether it be a charity or anything like that so we do have a um, partnership with Cleaning for a Reason, which is a nonprofit organization um, that allow, we not only donate to the organization every month, but we also provide two free cleanings for cancer patients per month. So each month they'll send us a, um, they'll send us contacts, like a contact information for two of their, uh, two of their applicants. Um, I guess I'm not sure what, you would refer to them as, but they, people can apply to cleaning for a reason to get a free cleaning if they um, qualify, if they're a cancer patient. So we provide two free cleanings um, per month and they'll provide us two more people each month after we've, you know, gone in our portal and marked off that the complete um, cleaning is complete. So that's one partnership we have. Um, I do send um, a thank you card and a small room spray to new customers so a uh, small business that sells like candles and um, home fragrance uh, products, I partner with them because they make it for us. It's kind of like a wholesale uh, partnership. So they'll create, they'll create the scent and create the label with our name on it and everything and all of our information. Um, and I'll purchase that from that small business and then use that to thank my customers. So that's another partnership for the most part. And then we do um, occasional donations to different charities um, that I'm familiar with that maybe some of my friends are familiar with. Um, is there, I've never partnered with another cleaning company before as far as like working together. It's just it's never the opportunity like off really overflow presented. bookings or something like that. Yeah. It's um, occasionally there's one cleaning company that may send their clients to us if they're unavailable, but it's not like a ongoing partnership. Sure. Um, that's for the most part that those are the main, the main two uh, companies that we partner with. Work life balance. <laughs> How are you handling that? I don't remember if we necessarily touched, maybe we touched it on, on it a little bit in, in part one, but uh, sure. yeah, uh, let's, let's dive into that. It's, yeah. Let's kind of separate it into two parts. Let's talk okay. first. 
how you had it when you were working that full time yes. nine to five, um, yeah. or it was seven to three. Um, yeah, tell us how you were doing that first sure. and foremost. Yeah, so I would say um, because I was so like hands on, like the first year and a half of my business where I was literally, excuse me, doing something every day, I would work during the daytime hours and then work in the evening um, and like work on my business in the evening. And at the time, it didn't feel as overwhelming because this was right when COVID hit, everything was shut down. Um, even at work, they were, you know, everyone's running around trying to figure out how to navigate things and what to do about this and what to do about that, being that we're all stuck in our house. So I felt like I had a lot more control over my time and I didn't feel overwhelmed because it was like, I can't go anywhere. Right. Um, <laughs> do like it's, you know, cer only certain locations are even open to do anything. Um, so it's like everyone was in the house. Um, so me working my regular job in the daytime and then doing stuff in my business in the evening, it was just like, I was just working all day. You know, I take my food breaks and, um, snacks or whatnot, but I was literally working from the time I woke up to the time I went to bed. Um, and I didn't mind that at the time because I didn't have anything else going on. And we were like technically on lockdown. Um, as things started to open up more. Um, as you know, my processes were in place and they were running smoothly. Um, I, I did less work for the business. I would say like 2021 ish. Um, and I said when I had also hired a VA, so a lot of tasks that I was doing initially, I was able to put on my VA who was taking care of all of that. Um, so 2021, I had like a really good work-life balance. I was able to work my regular job you know, assist my VA if he needed anything and still have like time for like a social life. Um, now, so since one of the main reasons why I left my job is because it was just becoming like, one, it was like a toxic work environment. Um, two, I, I felt like I couldn't spend time on my um, business anymore. Um, because my job was wearing me out so much that like, I didn't have the energy. Um, even if I had the time, I didn't have the energy. Um, they kills all of that energy. So um, when I left my job, I wanted to still kind of maintain some type of schedule and structure. Um, especially now that I, because I, I had two VAs also at that time, um, right before I left my job. And um, my last, my second last VA, she, she left cause she ended up migrating to the U S. Um, so now I try to, I try to keep a same, a similar work structure. And then I try to, um, you know, still wake up in the morning, um, rushing like I used to with a job. I try to ease into my day. So I may start working at like 10 AM. Um, and by working, I'm like checking the schedule, moving things around, assigning things to my VA, um, scrolling through maybe some applications for business grants, um, you know, filling out applications for my business certifications. I'm in the process of getting my certifications um, for my business set up. Um, so I'm more so working now, maybe like a 10 to three schedule where it's like, I still have like four hours, but I'm not like beating myself up working nine, 10 hour days. Sure. Um, yeah. So it feels better. Like it feels more comforting. It doesn't feel like work. It feels like this is just my responsibility. Um, most days are smooth if everyone is doing what they're supposed to do. Um, and then there are days where maybe I don't do any work all day because um, I have something else to take care of. And I'll come home and maybe give it like two hours just to go over some things, send some emails. Um, so now my work-life balance, I would say, is ideal um, because I can work when I want to work. If I don't want to work, I don't have to. Um, where I didn't have that freedom when I had the nine to five. Um, so it's it's definitely taken me a while to get to this point. And um, so we would love to take more breaks. 
Um, but we're still like at that three year mark. We're not, I'm not, my baby's not fully independent yet. Right. So hopefully by year five, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not working daily at all. Maybe if I, if I'm doing any work, it's occasionally, you know, stepping in, peeking in to do something, but my life involves something else. And I already have, you know, someone running my business for the most part. Super, super tricky time for you to start that business because like you said, <laughs> it gives you that time because everybody, you know, for several months, everybody was at home unless yeah. you were an essential business, um, which at the time I was working for a restaurant, I was a delivery driver. So I was, wow. I was out and about all the time. Um, wow. It was it almost in the beginning it definitely felt almost like post apocalyptic where <laughs> it was crazy driving from downtown chicago to the suburb that it was at it was like 15 16 miles away and non covid times yeah. during rush hour it would be an it hour to get out there i was getting in there like again speed was yeah. speeding a little bit but um i could get there in 15 minutes or less sometimes wow. it There's was nobody it, on the road not a single soul it was <laughs> i it, it freaked me out for a couple of weeks i was just not <laughs> it was used a crazy it. time yeah it and was a crazy time seems like so long ago but yet at the same time like yesterday <laughs> So again, yeah, that I don't, point was you started your business in such a tricky time because you yeah. personally had all the time in the world at that the point world, to yep. work on the business and get everything you needed, but nobody could leave their house. Nobody could work. And it's like, yep. how are you supposed to hire cleaners for, like you said, cleaning services or essential businesses then? Mm -hmm. How are you like the hiring and all that? It just super super tricky for you yeah. to handle all that and then get to the point where you start getting these jobs and start getting these cleaners all while in the dead middle of a pandemic yeah you know and as crazy as a time it was like people still wanted their house clean so I remember like I think I only had like maybe three cleaners at the time and um what we would do is the, the customer would leave the house. Um, they would, they'd have their scheduled appointment. And then when the cleaners got there, the customer would leave the house. Um, and then we would do kind of like a, a disinfectant spray, wipe down all of the touch points in the home before we left. And it worked for both us and the customers. It was, it was very like looking back on it, the fact that we were you know, in this era where none of us have experienced, you know, some deadly virus in our lifetime before, right. if we, maybe if we did, we were children at the time, but, um, this deadly virus going on and people are still okay with someone coming in their house to clean. So, um, you know, I, customers would call us all the time or they would, or it'd be situations where maybe someone was infected with COVID and they went to the hospital and their family wanted to get the place clean before they came back home. Um, we had a few of those as well. And I, you know, I had to make sure that our staff, you know, had full PPE and whatnot, but people were booking cleanings, um, even though we were on lockdown, like people still wanted their house clean. Um, and some of them had no issues just leaving the house, you know, maybe going for a jog, going to the park for two hours or something. Um, just so they can get their house clean. So it was it was definitely an interesting time. Um, initially, when you know it kept coming up on the news, and then it, we went on lockdown, I was like, "Oh man, like, I'm gonna have to probably close this business." And it was the complete opposite. Like people needed us. Um, it's just it's always a crazy story to tell because it's like, "Oh yay, I have this new business," and then a month later, it's like no, everyone's dying. There's no room in the hospitals. Like everyone's staying home. Yeah. Um, but people needed cleanings and we were there to do them. My fiance, um, she's a, she's a nurse and she's in specializes in the NICU. Um, and at the time she was the first nurse in her, in her hospital, well, in her unit 
to handle a COVID baby, which was born with it. The mom had COVID and passed it to the baby. And the way she came home and started describing like how she couldn't leave the room unless she needed to use the bathroom. And it was like, you have under five minutes to go and come back. If she needed anything, it had to be handed to her through like, I mean, if anybody's watched any like doctor show, Grey's Anatomy, House, yeah, yeah, yeah. any movie like that where a deadly virus is, you know, those plastic everywhere and it's just handed, that's exactly how it was. And and it's- her just coming home and explaining that to me, I was like, I don't, I don't know how you do it, let alone just the job and that specialty and seeing premature babies and just all that is just... And now you add that on top of it. I'm like, saint. It's a you crazy, are, it's you a crazy are time. A saint. Uh, so we talked about networking with the collaborations. What about setbacks and failures? Have you had any major ones? I mean, every business is going to have a setback, especially in the beginning stages. But you seem to adapt very quickly and very thorough and thoughtfully. So just talk about some, maybe one or two instances where where you had that. Sure. Um, I don't. I don't know that we've had any setbacks. Um, I've I've had a few situations where I'm like, this customer is about to bring my entire business down. But um, I was <laughs> eventually able to handle it. Um. And, it, it, you know, a lot of it boiled down to just not having the proper policies in place or just being too nice um, or just allowing things to happen that I could have taken control over. Um, so, you know, we've had we've had a few credit card disputes with. Um, Happens. And luckily, yeah, luckily, not a, not a lot. Um, probably in, in three years, maybe we've had about five and we probably won all, four of them. Um, so the disputes are always upsetting because it's like I already paid the cleaner and, you know, I got to prove that we did the work and we did the work to our standards and this customer is just trying to get over. So, you know, I, you take you take loss when it comes to stuff like that. Um, you just move on. It's not the end of the world. Um, I've had a few cleanings that just went horribly. Um, actually, during COVID, we had one customer that... Um, she just ended up being a horrible, horrible, horrible customer. And she complained about things that were missed during the cleaning. We sent the cleaning team back to do it, um, to do the reclean. She was upset with them doing the reclean. Then she accused them of like spilling some type of solution on her carpet that discolored it. We, you know, tried to hire some carpet repair companies and she got into it with them as well. It was just this back and forth thing for like three or four weeks. And she was threatening to sue us and all of this stuff. And I just ended up giving her a full refund (laughs) to just go away, (laughs) a full refund. And, you know, it was, it was a learning lesson for me because it's like in those situations, instead of, you know, spending time and money trying to fix things and make things right, just give the customer back their money and go about, you know, move on kind of thing. Um, so it was in it, like, I think I told you yesterday, like the first two years, like I would like beat myself up really bad when things did not go well. Um, or if there was just a customer that we were having a bad experience with, like I would take it personally, I would absorb all of that. And it was just weighing on me mentally. Now, you know, I know I can recognize a crazy customer from a mile away. I can feel it in my gut when someone's going to be problematic and I'm able to like stop it before it even happens. Um, Don't you so love when you develop that sense finally <laughs> yes. and you're like, you know what? I'm like, back, I can back always back away. <laughs> back away. Yes. Yes. I can always tell now, um, even sometimes I'll see the conversation between my VA and the customer and I'm like, start responding. Like I'll take care, I'll take over. Um, because I can tell. Um, so I can't honestly say we've had any like major setbacks, um, any issues we've had. I've luckily been able to resolve them and just move on and not have to suffer, you know, a huge loss to my business or anything like that. Um, 
yeah, I can't, I can't say that I've had any major issues and I hope I never do. That's, um, but that's fantastic. Again, yes. you know, it's, it's a business by business um, case. I know there have been times where Phil has told me things about King of Maids where there were instances like that. And I've heard other business owners telling me their sides of like horror stories and it's, yeah. You hope and pray that it doesn't happen. Unfortunately, you never know if it will. Mm -hmm. The only thing you can do is how you handle yourself in the situation. That's only control you have. Uh, yep. Set, set your policies, have your proof, and, and take it a step at a time because... You don't know who the other person you're dealing with is. You yeah. don't know. I'm, and in a sense, you're fortunate that that customer where you spent the weeks trying to resolve that carpet issue, you're fortunate that they took the refund and, right, and, and, went, away. and went away because <laughs> yeah. there Some are going to be, don't. no, there are people who will take that refund and then be like, you know what? It's not enough. I Right. I have a case here. I got a lawyer or I might not even get a lawyer. I could fight it myself and yeah. take it to small claims court and, and get a couple grand out of you. And it's like, yep. again, there are going to be instances where that can happen. And Absolutely. again, how you handle yourself in that scenario is going to be monumental Yep. in every aspect, your, your work-life balance, your the way you handle your business going forward with disputes and angry customers and yeah. now deciding if I want to go down that route cause with this new customer because they sounds like they're kind of similar to the last one where I had <laughs> yeah. that issue. Like, do yep. I want to take that chance again or am I just going to be like, next, you know? Yeah. Don't and I, I also, I, that's why I also ensure that you know i'm doing everything like i'm like my business is in compliance like there's there's no vulnerabilities no one can come and say that you know i'm treating my ic's like employees right. um no one can say like my terms and conditions my policies all of my requirements you know for the state of maryland like everything is in compliance. And that was something that was like important to me. Cause I'm like, I never want to be in a situation where someone can get my business taken down because I didn't do something correctly, or I'm, you know, I'm not following correct labor laws or, you know, I didn't pay this tax or something like that. Like I want everything to be legal, everything to be in compliance. So in the case that I do have a crazy customer trying to sue me or trying to do whatever my insurance you know everything is is in place to protect me um you know my llc everything is in place the 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 correct way the legal way um to protect me and i think that is important as well because i hear of companies that you know get that letter from the department of labor and get huge slapped with a huge fine because whether one of their disgruntled ICs went and reported the company. That's another very important thing is that I don't ever want my cleaners to turn against me where they try to report me or something um, to the government. Like there's, I've had friends who have cleaning companies where they had a fallout with one of their cleaners and, you know, the person will try to file a complaint or something against them. Um, I don't ever want to have to deal with that. I don't want to ever have to deal with any type of fine from the don't you love a little bit of extortion <laughs> from your previous employees? I, just, like, I never I try that's why I always tell them I treat everyone the way I want to be treated. Even if you're percent. not a good cleaner, even if the quality of your work is horrible, I'ma still treat you well, but you can't work here. You know right. <laughs> and so you know point, that to that point that you said getting everything set up right legally, making sure your ass is covered front to back going forward. Looking at where you want to start your business. And this is, I would say, everybody who's already in the industry knows California is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> very, very, very particular 
and very strict of their guidelines of what an independent contractor is mm -hmm. versus what an employee is. If you start anywhere else, those restrictions are way lighter. Yeah. Um, that's why there are several features that we have implemented and added into the software so that business owners who would like to pursue in California with the independent contractor model have these assurances that they are backed up. Right, um, right. And that's where I kind of want to take this now is how, what specific features are you using for, in that sense, to like cover yourself? Do you have the, you said you have the employees take before and after pictures. So you're using the upload, the drive from the app. Or are they just saving? I don't. Only, only one of my cleaners uploads the, her pictures on the job because she knows how to. Um, trying to explain to the rest of them, it's just not, um, I don't have the energy for that. So we actually have a WhatsApp chat for e each team. Um, each cleaning team has a WhatsApp chat that includes them, myself, and my VA. So they put all of their before and after pictures. They put their ETAs in there, any issues, any questions. That's how we communicate. Um, so that's our main, like we're on WhatsApp every day, all day, um, talking on there. And they put their before and after pictures in there. Signature feature. Do you have uh, your provider walk through with the, with the customer at the end of the cleaning and, and have them sign on their phone? I know we haven't had them sign. We haven't had any customer sign. Um, we ask the we tell the cleaner to do a walkthrough so that they don't have to come back for a reclean. Um, so that's mainly why they are doing walkthroughs. It's not to really like ha you know make the customer agree to something and sign it. Um, we don't. We haven't used that feature mainly because um, they know the basics of the Booking Koala provider app, but all of those um, awesome features they. They wouldn't like just to remind them to send the ETA every single morning, like they wouldn't be able to keep up with that. Sure. Um, so I, I try to focus on people's strengths. I do have one cleaner that does everything, uses everything properly. Um, even the on the way button in the app and you know clocking she, in, clocking out. Clocking, with the yeah, feature. yeah. She's she's a little bit younger. I feel like that's why she quickly picked up on that. Um, but the rest of them trying to get them to do that. It's just, I try to just focus on the main things that I need. Sure. Um, if they do additional things, that's great, but trying to get them to do everything is just asking for a problem. <laughs> what about, and this would be more like your setting up and sure. your customers seeing it on the booking form, right before you submit the booking, there's, you can enable that checkbox for mm -hmm. terms of conditions terms and conditions and privacy policy do you have that set up and explaining everything in there for your uh, customers yeah so we have right now on the booking form at the bottom when you click like book now um we do have like a quick blurb that says I'll tell you exactly what it says Okay, so it says when they go to hit book now, it says they have to check a box that says, I hereby accept the terms of service, which links to our terms of service, privacy policy, and agree to receive emails and text messages from no more dust made services. That was another thing I had to add because some people were like reporting our texts and emails. Um, so I don't want to get like our domain or anything shut down. So I have like proof that you agree to receive emails and texts from us. And that I understand that my appointment time is an arrival window. Um, and then there's like another statement that has I authorize no more dust main services to charge my credit card above for agreed upon purchases, blah, 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 blah. And then they have to click book now. And then that same, those same links, the terms of service and privacy policy is also included in our booking confirmation. So you can't say that we never, we didn't provide you this information or you weren't unaware of it because you are agreeing to it when you click book now. So you, I mean, again, showing how you adapt and change with how your providers are not tech savvy, but you are still covering yourself yes. and your business so that any potential lawsuits or any 
nonsense that comes up in the future, <laughs> you're covered. And there yeah. are features that, again, are built into the software to add that protection for business owners. And some don't know about it, mm -hmm. or and then some do, and they use it. And they still potentially run into issues, issues yeah. which it's funny enough because I've heard stories and have seen firsthand people who kind of use the features. And I'm not saying that they're using them wrong, but they still run into issues with potential arguments with Stripe over, you know, customers getting wanting refunds and, and yeah. stuff like that. But I'm just coming back to you and setting up everything just so perfectly with <laughs> the customers you choose to work with who are not going to be coming back and reporting you for, you know, who so they cool. are scamming business owners yep you're weeding yep. those out and you still do walkthroughs your providers are doing walkthroughs and getting those before and after pictures and it just so many different ways to do these things yeah and you and a have lot of times, it down yeah. pat yeah and I, I was gonna say like a lot of times it, it, it's not like this was something i knew initially Right. A lot of times it takes you getting burned by someone to put certain policies in place. So it's like now, like a lot of policies we have in place is because a customer had an issue in the past. You know, I put the arrival window thing because no matter how many times I emphasize that it's a window that they're going to arrive between, customers will book an 8 to 10 window and then call you at 801 screaming as to why the cleaners are not there. Um, so I, I put it in every correspondence we have, like, do you understand that this is a rival window, meaning the cleaners will arrive between this time? Um, same thing with you are agreeing to our terms of service. So that means you're agreeing to our, our refund policy. You're agreeing that we have to come out and do a reclaim before we even consider a refund. You're agreeing that, you know, if we damage something in your home, you have to allow us to replace it or repair it. Um, before just trying to send us an invoice or something like that. Um, you know, it has all of that information because I want people to understand that, like, you're not going to get over on us no matter how hard you try. Um, and they I've will actually, try. They will try. I've actually had a situation, and thank God this was a situation where the cleaner had took before and after pictures. Um, the customer tried to say that they didn't do a good cleaning. Um, and what the customer did was take, bad pictures prior to the cleaners even coming there and try to use those as like saying that they didn't do what they were supposed to do. So I had the proof from the cleaner, you know, showing this is what it looked like before and this is what it looked like, you know, after um, once we were done. And this person tried, uh, apparently this person used a stolen credit card. Um, so they tried to dispute it and it was this whole thing. But luckily we had the proof with the pictures I had my policies to submit. I had the confirmation email that this person agreed to our terms um, when they booked the cleaning and so on. So as long as you have all that, you know, your ducks lined up, right? Um, you know, the worst of scammers Wait. still cannot get over on you. <laughs> I just kind of put that together. This customer used a stolen credit card, booked services, and then still wanted the <laughs> refund. Yeah. Yes, it was insane. It That's was a new insane. one. That's insane. a new one. It was insane. I don't know where these people came from. They were from a different planet, but I was like, nope. Seems like it. <laughs> Motivation. Yes. Because that is, I mean, got to be everything. And if your motivation goes down, your business can go down very quickly right after how are you staying motivated and maintaining that entrepreneurial drive? Sure. Um, I will say what keeps me motivated is knowing that there's still so much opportunity for more growth. Um, there's opportunity to making um, more of an impact. Like I want to do more community, you know, involved work. Um, there's, it's just still so much more to do. Um, there's still so much more to learn. 
Um, there's still so much areas that I can expand to. And knowing that, you know, you know, I can maybe add a laundry service and, and have a separate business that may be connected to this. Like knowing that there's still so many things that I can do is what keeps me motivated. Cause it's like, I'm excited. Like I'm not done yet. Like I've done a lot of great things, but I'm not done yet. Um, so I think that keeps me motivated, like knowing that I can make more money, knowing that I could maybe retire myself, you know, early before 45 years old or something. Um, knowing that I can use this business um, to create more income for myself. Like I invested in a um, commercial real estate um, opportunity at, under my business as an accredited investor, um, knowing that the more you know money I make in my business, the more I can put into other areas of my life to make more money for me um, is something that keeps me motivated because it's like, hey, like you can actually become like a rich person if you keep going. Um, <laughs> um, it's just just knowing that there's just a lot more work to do and a lot more like right. great stuff that can come out of this. Um, but then this it is goes just the beginning. And then it goes back to it's not really work. It's right. it doesn't it's not a job and it is a business, but it's fun. It it's really fun. It's it really becomes fun. And if you just understand that putting in the grind, putting in the hours and understanding there will be setbacks, but don't let them set you back is it's you wake up every day almost refreshed and it doesn't yeah. if you go five hours of sleep and you wake up the next day feeling bright eyed, bushy tail, ready to go, then <laughs> you you've made it your business is going and and you can't be stopped yes and then just knowing because this is something that you don't really know when you're working a nine to five but now i know that i have control over like the trajectory of like my next few years like i can decide for myself which which way i want to go how far i want to go you know where i want to take this i can relocate overseas and you know, live somewhere on a beach and still run my business. Like knowing that and having this, these just like a uh, belief that I can kind of s create the life that I want for myself, like that in itself definitely keeps me motivated. Huge, huge, huge things right there. Um, important lessons. What, I mean, three and a half years in, I'm sure there's more than a few, but <laughs> yeah. what are, what would you uh, say were the top two? Um, the top two, definitely you cannot, um, okay. I don't want to say you cannot, but you as a leader, as a business owner, like the nice stuff cannot exist. Like People will take advantage of you. People will walk all over you if you are too nice. And I started off my business, you know, just being too nice, allowing too many things to happen. And you cannot survive that way. Like you have to be firm. You have to be direct. You have to, um, you know, put those policies in place, no matter who you're dealing with, whether it's a relative or a close friend. Um, just being nice as a business owner cannot fly. Now you can be professional, you can be kind, but being nice is really not going to get you anywhere. Like you're, 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 you're going to get business, walked over. Yes. Your, you. your business will flop eventually. Um, and I had to learn that a lot of my problems in the first year, I felt like came because I was just too nice. Um, so the niceness has to go. It it can't, it cannot, it cannot exist. Um, the, the second thing I would say is, you know, invest in yourself just as much as you invest in your business Huge. and um, not just even financially, but like the self care in like making sure you get enough rest because it's like when I don't get rest, I'm grumpy and angry and I may not handle things well when I feel that way. Um, so this business is, is not going to go anywhere. Like treating myself to the best rest I can get, exercising, making sure I'm healthy, like, 
you know, if I have heart issues and I'm in and out of the hospital, I can't run a successful business. You know what I mean? So it's like eating healthy, to, eating the right food, yeah, eating healthy, uh, exercising, four or five like, Red Bulls a day, and, yeah. and <laughs> as much caffeine that you could that, jam right? down your throat. To just no. Yes, yes, and it's like you know with like hustle culture and having to work, 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 and put in all these hours, like, yes, you absolutely have to work hard and put in a lot of hours, but you have to manage your time and manage like, you know, the, the, the stress that you're putting on your body. Um, so I, I would, I always tell people just make sure you have some system in place to allow for downtime. Um, Sundays were closed. So like, that's my only day off. You know, and I try to remind people of that, like Sundays, I want to do what I want to do um, because I don't, I can't do what I want to do, you know, Monday through Saturday for the most part. So um, making sure that I am intentional about my personal time, um, you know, how I spend my personal time and just, you know, treating myself well, the same effort that I want to give my business. I'm also giving that to myself. From day one. Have you been Monday through Saturday? No, we used to be seven days a week, actually. Okay. When did you switch to six? I switched to six. Um, it didn't take a long time, actually, because I got tired quick. I want to say <laughs> maybe by like June of 2021. I switched to, um, I removed right. Sunday one, cause it was hard to get people to work on Sunday. And I'm sure. like, you know what? Like they're working every day. They need time to spend with their families. I wasn't even thinking about myself when I made the decision initially, I was thinking about the cleaners. I'm like, they need a day with their family. Um, and I was adamant, adamant about it to the customers as well, because Customers will want you to operate twenty four seven if if you if you allow them. Absolutely. I'm like that's not. There, our players have families; they have children to take care of. Like, so um, I think I want to say around June twenty twenty one. I was just like, we're not, and I'm Catholic, so my parents always wanted me to go to church on Sunday. I'm like, Sunday's just going to be a day of rest or a day of whatever you want it to be where we are completely yeah. closed and no one's coming out to clean houses on Sunday. Three and a half years. Yeah. 1.1 million in revenue and a year and a half in, you knocked off a probably one of the busier, if not busiest days yeah. of the week. And you still rocking and rolling and hitting these numbers it i i cannot wait to see <laughs> what you got in the next couple of years it, yes. you it's just it's truly i i heard a quote actually last night and your business is not a business it's if you have a love and passion for what you do it's it's not a business it's it's just a part of you your yeah. business becomes a part of it. It's just, a, it's second nature. It's you, you know what, you know what you have to do. And as long as the money is not the driving factor in it, yeah, then just be so good that nobody can do it better than you. And yep. then the money comes. If your priority is the money, more than likely it's you're going to fail. Yep. That so, is so true. It just... And again, not my quotes. I'll say that out there. <laughs> I heard it last night and I literally, I had to rewatch that video four or five times and I paused it just so I could write this down and mention it knowing that we were, we were doing the part two today. Yeah. And, and it resonates so much with you. I see that. And you're the first person I thought of in mind when when I heard that, because we did part one earlier that day, and I'm like, this is exactly Poyette's, you know, MO here. That's just, yeah. that's why her business has been so successful. And no knock to anybody else. I'm, I'm sure everybody or a lot of people have this mindset. And there are people who, you know, mindset is the money, but, and it should be somewhat. 
Right. Yeah. It, it has to be somewhat because as a business owner, if money is not the driving factor, then it's a charity. Right. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Exactly. And you you need to have passion and love. Cleaning is it's not a sexy business. Service based businesses <laughs> are not sexy businesses. Yeah. So nobody's saying that it's 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 supposed to be like that. Yeah. You make it what it is by what you put into it. And with that, short-term goals versus long-term goals. Mm -hmm. Give me your one-year-out goal and then give me your five-year-out goal. Sure. Um, so one year, I want to be doing um, government contracts. Um, it's something that you know, has been a goal of mine for a while. And um, I mentioned that I, I couldn't do it initially because I worked for the government um, and it was, you know, a conflict of interest. But now that I'm free, <laughs> um, that is definitely one of my goals is to get some um, government contracts because I think that would sustain us um, actually to kind of just take on bigger things. Um, I want And it's to secure. It's, it's it's getting secure, a getting right. a government contract. It's that's that's big. That's you're secure. secure. You're not worried about because they will they will look until they find the right one, and when they find that right one, they don't want to switch. Right. <laughs> they, exactly. As, exactly. As long as it's you're there putting in that work and and everything is fantastic and there's no issues, you will. There's a very small percent of chance that you're going to lose that contract. Yeah, and it's it's a huge thing around here because it's this area is heavily focused on government work. A lot of people who live here, they're either in the government or they're in the military of some sort, or they're doing consulting for government. So um, it's huge in this area, and it would be crazy for me to you know not tap into that um, area. So government contracting within the next year, I would love to add laundry service, like a pick up and drop off laundry service. Um, you know, I've been thinking about it, researching for like the last month, figure out how to navigate this. Um, if I want to partner with the laundromat or if I just want to try to maybe purchase a space and the equipment and hire the people to do the work. Um, just now I'm really, I'm in a research phase where I'm just kind of looking at how other laundry services are operating, what they're doing, what their business model looks like. But I would love to do that. And it's something that our customers ask for all the time, but my current cleaners cannot do laundry. So I just, I don't offer it because um, I just don't want any, any issues. Um, but that's something that I would love to, you know, add to my business as an extension um, that I believe will be very profitable because it ties back into that, like, whole, everyone in this area works a lot. They're very busy. They love to outsource everything. They outsource their meal prep. They outsource their laundry. They outsource their cleaning. Um, any service that's offered to make your life easier, the residents of this area are using it. Um, so that's a more short-term goal. Long-term, um, long-term, I would love to expand to more cities, um, possibly franchising, maybe if that's, if that's an option. Um, but I know that no more just made services, especially now that I have done everything from scratch. Um, I know that I'm fully capable of standing up some more locations, um, which would mean more revenue, um, more hiring. Copy Actually, and paste. It's yes, yes, copy literally. And paste at literally. that point. <laughs> so it's just right now, it's just a matter of identifying what areas. Um, as you know, you aside from the demand being so high here, there's also areas that cleaning businesses have been successful because they're like the only ones in the area. Um, so I want to identify where maybe those cities are as well um, versus, you know, trying to jump into another area that already has a ton of them. Maybe identifying some cities that just don't have that service, but needs the service. Um, so that's more of like my long term is expanding to more cities. And you already know when looking for those new locations. Marketing, going mm -hmm. back to the marketing. Yep. You're going to have to test again just to see where, what I mean, works. what works, but at the same time, you can kind of scope out competition and, you know, choose the five top on SEO on the highest ranked 
keyword and then see where their how their Facebook is. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you can see their ads on Facebook. You could see a business's ads on Facebook. Yeah. You can see where their reviews are at. So now that you have that general idea of, or not, it's not even idea. It's just, you know what worked for you and you know that it might not necessarily be the same in a different city, but you know how to go about finding that information. Right. It's just, again, copy and paste what you know and just tweaking things. Yep. And yep. higher, 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 copy and paste again after after a year in that city or maybe even do two cities at once if yeah. if you have a couple VAs at that point who can kind of help assist maybe, yeah yeah two VAs work on the business and one other VA helps you with the copy and paste yeah. so a little there's, bit of, there's so many options there's so many options there is it, it really isn't you could franchise but then you're losing a big cut of the money that you could have for yourself if you yeah. just spent that couple months work of establishing your name right. in there getting in your foot getting those reviews and now growing it up yeah. talking a little bit with social media how big a factor is that for you um so i feel like like we do get a ton of bookings where when when customers fill out that question, how did you hear about us? You know, they'll put Instagram or Facebook. And, um, you know, I post content every single day. Um, I mainly schedule, I'll sp schedule like 10 days worth of content. So it's just, it's automatically posted on its own. Um, and people are booking from the stuff that I post. And it could be like, for the most part, I stick with like the similar, similar types of content each time. So I'll post um, customer testimonials. I'll post before and after pictures. I'll post reels showing like the transition from when we first got to the house and then after the cleaning is finished. Um, occasionally I'll post like tips for your day, day of your service, like things to know. Um, I'll post some of our policies every now and then. So it's like a, a good variety of types of content. Um, and people love seeing the before and after pictures. They love seeing the transformation. Um, I guess the proof of work shows that we're doing something when we come to your house. Like it's not, we're not just coming down and just wiping down some dust and leaving. Like we're really doing, <laughs> we're really doing something when we come to your house. So um, I, I feel like social media is, is huge for us. Um, it's hard. It's not as straightforward. Like I can see with Google ads, it'll show me like how much I spent and how much clicks I got from that. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, it's hard for me. And there probably is a way I just haven't educated myself enough on the way, way to determine like how much money I'm putting I'm putting towards social media and how much business I'm getting from that same amount that I'm putting in. Um, but I will say we don't spend a lot on Facebook ads, probably like a hundred bucks a month, which is nothing um, for a company of this big. And we get several, I would say at least three to four customers a month that put down Facebook or Instagram that they found out about us. Um, so it, 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 it's working for us. Um, I don't, you know, feel like I need to stop it or change it or anything. Sure. It, it's working. And, um, I think it's also tools that our target audience uses. Um, so that's also helpful as well. Um, we get a lot of brand awareness from like our um, reels. Like it'll, Facebook will show me like you got this, this amount of followers from your reel. Um, so people will follow us based on seeing our work online. So even if they don't necessarily book a cleaning, um, they now follow our social media pages and, you know, the more followers you have, the better, cause it's more, you know, more online presence essentially. Um, so yeah, I, th I think it's helpful. And I always tell people like, you just need to post, like, it doesn't have to be some extravagant, you know, <laughs> high tech video. Um, you know, all of our posts are like photos of cleaning. It's not exciting right. content, but it shows that we're working and that's what people want to see. They're like, wow, this company is, is doing it. Like they're killing it. <laughs> so that's, that's you, important. 
if you want to brand out the pictures and the posts a little bit, get yourself a Canva account or whatever, mm -hmm. yep. whatever app software you want to use and Pop play around with there. it. There's mm -hmm. templates that you can just click on and move your pictures into and and you don't necessarily have to just upload a grainy picture right. or two grainy pictures side by side. You can make it brand it to your business. Yeah. And again, it will take a little bit of time, a little bit extra time, but it's not something like we both have stated. You don't have to do some crazy thing yeah. to go viral with a dance or, you know, walking up to people on the street asking them questions this right. is, you know, you know, <laughs> yeah man, that's a I whole <laughs> nother thing yeah, we won't get into that but yeah yeah it, yeah you again you don't have to go that far with it especially when we're saying why it's not a sexy business so yeah. why put it's like putting lipstick on a pig it, everybody yeah. knows it is what it is it brand it you know make it look a little bit nicer with the branding um and and yeah don't make don't go for overkill yeah don't go for overkill because then you're going to burn yourself out it's not probably not going to do any difference in engagement than yeah. um than what you would normally post so why why put all that extra stress on yourself for for no reason you know. Yeah, you, yeah, I agree. You don't have to. I um for this month we did a uh fifteen percent off deep cleanings in on Tuesdays, um because for whatever reason Tuesdays just seem to be our slower day. So I'm like, let me try to use an incentive to get more cleanings yeah. on a Tuesday, and literally every time I post that flyer, someone calls to book, and it's you know it's the most simple simplest flyer. It just literally says you know, 15% off on deep cleanings on Tuesdays for the month of August using this code um, and post it and people see it and they call us or they go online and book it. Um, so it's like low effort, free lead. And now you have a booking um, just from posting. A on flyer. a slow day where you don't right. have a lot of bookings, your providers who want to fill up that day want, exactly. are now getting work and extra money in in their pocket for the week and it's again don't have to go crazy with things don't have to reinvent the wheel um yeah. i know some businesses don't necessarily like to do discounts but if you are doing discounts figure figure that out figure out what day is slowest for you which we have that in the software yeah. and you can give a better discount like you could show the calendar on your booking form and show Hey, look, Tuesday, if you book 15% off or Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there's no discounts on those days. But if I book, damn, Tuesday is my day off. I have Tuesdays right. and Thursdays off from work. I would love Sorry, to do yeah. a Tuesday and I'm saving 15%. <laughs> you bet, right. you know, why not? So it's just figuring out the things that work and, and going from there. Yeah. In, in regards to the software now, technology how does that play a role in your business um i it's it's definitely a bonus for us because i i we do have a good amount of clients that just go online and book so the fact that we've made that process so easy and and simple for them um that's that's a plus um and then the the emails and the texts, like people love that because they they need reminders. Um, it's it comes in a, a digestible way where they can read it if they have a question or if they need to change something, they can log into their account. Um, it has it has made running the business like very easy. Um, I don't occasionally it's and it's not often. Occasionally we'll have you know, older customers who just rather book over the phone. Um, and, you know, we can, we'll take care of that. But I'm seeing more and more online bookings now than I ever have um, compared to like year one and year two. Um, so that means people are not only finding us easily, but they can do everything on their own without our guidance. They can figure out, you know, what's included and what type of cleaning, which cleaning is best for their home, 
you know, what add-ons they need to add uh, and all of that. So um, I, technology has definitely worked for us. Um, it has made, I guess, running the business very easy. Um, the automation that we have in, in, in place now, like with the reviews and, you know, once the the booking is marked as like charged and I have like a zap that, you know, sends out this remind, I mean, how was your, how was your planning? If everything went great, please leave us a review on our Google page. Um, you know, all of that stuff is, is working without me having to do anything. Um, and yeah, I, I can't say that it's, I think, I don't even know if we would be as successful as we are if I didn't have such a simplified, easy, user-friendly process in place. Right. I mean, in this day and age, tech is is everything and then some, you know? Yes. It's, it's, it's everywhere. Uh, and the fact that you're even stating you're sleeping and you're getting bookings. Right. People, people don't have to call you. <laughs> don't have and, to talk to anyone. And you don't have to talk to anyone. That's massive. You know, it is. I, I, I feel like every interview it's talked about with the, I don't want to call them old timers, but <laughs> the, the OG ones who would, you know, you got a call and then they would schedule a walkthrough to see how dirty the place is. And then they would be like, okay. It's going to be this much. Right. And then now you got to wait to see if the customer says yes or no. And then if right. they say yes, then now you got to schedule the booking. Yeah. If they say no, well, now you potentially you wasted waste half of your day, time, yep. money. It's just why in the hell is anybody still doing that <laughs> on a regular every booking basis? Yeah, that's I'll insane. state that because if you do post construction for and you're taking houses over 3000 square feet mm -hmm. that makes total sense or if you're doing commercial in an office right. building where it's five plus floors and several hundred cubicles you're going to want to see what you're getting yourself into yep. so i'm not saying knock it out but that was geared towards the ones that are doing it strictly for residential cleanings yeah. on a every case basis. It just makes zero sense. Yeah. It, we, we occasionally have customers that call asking us to come out. We, you know, we have, I have a whole blurb for my VA, like why we don't need to do an in-person walkthrough and how our pricing is based on the average amount of time. It takes to complete the cleaning based on the size of your house. And, you know, these are all the things, the information that we need to give you a price and so on. Um, but yeah, there's there's still some people that want you to come out. And I'm like, I will never. <laughs> there's no way yeah. possible. Because like you said, you like they don't book. And then now you've wasted time driving there, talking to them. It's no. And it's if it's not you, it's not what well, you can't really send a provider because then. Right. They don't know. They don't know. And you might potentially get your provider poached by this right. person. <laughs> right. And to do it for cheaper. <laughs> for, exactly. For cheaper. And then your provider is going to come back and be like, yeah, it didn't work out. Where right. and then they already booked it for the next day and they're right. going to just do it for 25% less what you would have yep. charged. But now they're keeping the whole damn thing. Yep. Yep. So, yep. Avoid headaches at all costs when you yes. can. And that is the number one thing that you can do. You mentioned in part one that you used a different software. You used Launch 27. Mm -hmm. And how long how long did you use them before you switched over to us? I switched over to Booking Koala in June of I think between like May and June of 2020. 21 because it took took like maybe two to three weeks to transfer all of the customers over um so i yeah i switched in june of 2021 and a friend was already using it and he had recommended it he said you know it has all these features it just it had everything that i really needed um the biggest thing was just learning how to use it right um so uh I switched, yeah, I switched in June 2021. And the main reason I had left Launch 27 is because they had a lot of issues with it being down. 
Um, so it's like, you know, we start business at 9 a.m. and no one can log in. No one can view anything. The cleaners can't see what, what what's the address for their uh, cleaning. It was just, it happened too many times that I was like, I need something more reliable, something with better features. And, you know, Book and Koala was super user-friendly. Um, to me, anyone who knows the basics of a computer can figure out Book and Koala. Um, so, you know, I, I kind of taught myself some stuff. Um, Roger, who helped me transition all my customers over, went through all the basics with me. Shout and out then, Roger you know, Schultz. Huge yes, help. Yes. Huge. He's been Huge. a <laughs> massive integral part of, I know, every business owner that he has helped set up. And he has been massive in in our success. Yeah. It hit him. Yeah. Me using him to transition was huge because I'm like, OK, I wouldn't have known any of that. Um, and then even after he helped me transition, like I said, he kind of went through the basics. He did his own like short t- tutorial with me um, and then quick learner. So once I figured it out, I was able to teach my VA how to use it. Um it's it's just it's so it's such a like a common sense tool um where it's like you read the functionality and it's like you know exactly what it's supposed to do you know what i mean like it's not complicated like i like i said it's very it's it's very user friendly in that even my current va when she first started she actually um cuz i was going to do maybe like 2 to 3 days of training with her she was like no she'd rather just do hands on so she jumped right in oh, and wow. started yeah, she jumped right in and started working with us. Um, you know, I had like a, a few like Loom videos that I had recorded um, showing like how to create a booking, um, you know, how to reschedule or how to cancel. But she jumped right in and she figured out most of the functionality on her own. So that says a lot. <laughs> Shout out um, to your VA then, because that is, yeah. I mean, that's, that's takes, takes a lot of patience. Yeah. Um, admittedly the software is so feature rich yeah for the reason you know how we've been talking in in both parts that you can set your business up so many different ways Mm -hmm. we made the software to be able to handle all those different different cases Yeah, that makes and sense. we have all those features for that reason. So for somebody to jump in and it's like somebody not knowing how to swim, dump, jumping into the deep end of the pool <laughs> with no floaties on it's then teach him to swim. You know, that's yeah. basically what she did to herself. And yeah, I, I was amazed. <laughs> that's incredible. So great and how long yeah how long did it take her to basically get everything down pat um i would say maybe about a month um yeah maybe about a month because when she was initially hired she was really she was hired mainly to just close out leads so her main focus was any inquiries that came in any you know quote requests that came in she was responsible for either getting on the phone and booking that person or sending them the information that they needed to to book. Um, so she was she was just knocking she was knocking them out, just booking people easily. Um, so I would say to, to, it took her about a month to to um, learn like just the main stuff that she was using. And then as you know, situations came up, I would be like, "This is what you need to do to address this. This is how you see this. You know, if customers leave us ratings, this is how you go view the ratings. Um, you know, and so on and this is how, you know, you reschedule somebody or cancel somebody or resume a booking that maybe was canceled because the card couldn't go on hold. It's like stuff like that, like special cases. But all of the the basic ma- the basic stuff, like creating a booking, choosing the type of service, choosing the location, it was pretty straightforward. To, because the way the booking form is laid out is like, it tells you exactly what to input. So right. all you have to do is ask the, the customer those questions. It's not like you have to figure anything out. Um, and so, yeah, what, which style of booking form did you, do you have one step where it's all on one page, the two step or the multi-step? 
Um, so I, t I would technically say it's one step, but we do have three different tabs. So we have a tab for residential cleaning, a tab for commercial cleaning, um, and a tab for carpet cleaning. Um, I what separate about, the car what about for the, like for the customer, if I'm a customer, I land on your booking page. What am I going to see? Am I seeing everything? I will scroll all the way down and see submit booking. Or am I going to see, you know, I'll scroll down and at the bottom, I'll input my email address and hit next. And then no, I'll no, be, no. no, all on no, one. No, it's yes. Everything is all on one form. Um, so they select what county they live in, um, what service they want, whether it's basic, uh, deep, moving, post-construction or hourly. Um, they select their service, then it it's the forms already defaulted to one time. If they want to schedule recurring, they could choose one of those options. Um, then they just have to put in their parameters, bedroom size, um, square footage, select any add-ons um, to their contact information, the address and so on, how they found out about us, um, any special instructions, and then they hit book. So it's it's literally that whole book in 60 seconds or less. Like if they have all the information that is required, they can submit that within one minute. Um, and so, yeah, it's it's straight. It's pretty straightforward. One step. The reasoning behind choosing the one step is because you just wanted it as simplistic and easy for the customer as possible, just so they could see it all right there. Yes. And because we've, we've changed a few times, so I've like added stuff and this is like the, to me, this is the easiest customizable form, I guess you could say. Okay. Um, it's, it's just, it's easier for me to like add another service. Like if I, it was easy for me to add extras. Um, so I, this was easy for me to configure. And then it's also easy for the customer to kind of go through. Um, I don't, I don't know what would happen if there was like multiple steps. I think I would use multiple steps if I offered like just maybe two services, like a basic cleaning and a deep cleaning. Um, but because we offer, uh, like a, a little list, we have post-construction, we have our moving cleanings. We also have hourly cleanings and we also have organized organizing. Um, they just well, have to select it from a drop down. With that, you could also, I mean, if you did do a two-step, they would have a pop-up and they would choose from those services first. Which one they wanted. Which one they wanted. And then it would bring them to that specific form, how you have it built out. But the reason I'm kind of going over that is mm -hmm. because for the two-step, have you been, you've always, you've always used a one-step from mm -hmm. when you signed up. Okay. So with the two-step, the email at the bottom, when you hit next, the customer will put in just like basic information and then they'll put in their email and then they'll help hit next. That'll bring them to the scheduling side where they can pick, you know, a provider if you allow them to choose their providers day of the week uh, and stuff like that. And it'll show them the price now on the second page if you want to show them it on the second page, because you could show it to them on the first page as well, if you wanted to. But if you just kept it on the second page, you captured their email. And now if they either didn't find a provider that they liked based off of reviews, or mm -hmm. if you didn't have availability, or if they just wanted to see the price and they bounced and they left, now you have their email. And it goes into the cart abandonment part of the software. Ah, I see. Now you can hit them with your retargeting to get them to come back and book for whatever whatever reason. If it was non-availability or, or price or something like that, you can get them to come back. So that's just a little overview on, on that and why somebody would be more inclined to choose that two-step, but simplistic and simplicity and having the everything on one form it kind of drives people to book faster like you said in under yeah. 60 seconds under 60 it doesn't seconds. give them the time to basically go away where it's like it's so easy it's all right here i see it i'm done it's if a distraction comes into play if their kid comes into the room like mom dad i can I have a snack or I, I right. got to go to the bathroom? 
whatever, if kind of just knocks it all out and you're done, you know, it, yeah. it's it all right there and they could get it over with. Yeah, we do have a, um, that, no, that, that's a good idea. And I can understand why that is like super helpful, um, flow for the, for that form as well. We do have a widget that captures our leads. So prior to, if people go to our main page, um, like when they come to our main page, there's like a widget that captures their name, email address, and then like the specs of their house, like how many bedrooms and bathrooms. Um, and then they, once they hit book on there, it'll take them to the actual booking page, but I still have now their information is populated into like our um like lead list um essentially. So if I didn't have that, I would probably switch to that other form um that would get that because I would need some way of capturing leads, especially for people who, you know, come to the site and fill out everything, but they don't actually go through with the booking. Right. And again, people could put in, you know, bogus phone number, bogus email, bogus name, and it is what it is, but you don't want those people. Those are right. those are headache customers, or it's probably that it's just a competitor checking out your flow and seeing seeing what you're doing and how you're doing it. And either they're going to mimic, copy it, or they're just nosy. So yeah. <laughs> it, you'll run into that as well. Again, it's not going to end up being your customer. You don't want it to. The ones that you know, truthfully, put in that info get through that first page and book in that minute, especially if they're not calling you huge yeah, huge for you, huge for your business, huge for your bottom dollar because you're not wasting the marketing and you're not wasting time on the phone with them. Yeah. 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 One feature that you couldn't live without. Um, hmm. That's a good one. Uh, one feature I could not live without. I'd say just being able to view the calendar, um, the different views, being able to see how many cleanings are assigned to each provider that's like on the side of the page. Just that main like calendar view when you first like log in. So I like the fact that I can look at it. I can look at the whole month at one at one time. Um, I can look at the day. I can look at the week. Um, and then I can also see how many uh, cleanings are assigned to each of my providers all on the same page. Definitely a big help when you are trying to fit in a loose one-off booking that came in last minute. Don't yeah. want to overload a certain provider who might not necessarily be able to handle it. Um, you could color code them. I know people yes. love that color coding feature. So, you know, you just... <laughs> Put that to memory. This person is blue. This person is green. Yada yada yada. And and it definitely does help streamline that, especially when you're super busy that day and you got to somehow fit that booking in. Definitely a big help for sure. One yeah. feature you wish we had, and why? The one feature. There's so many. I can't imagine that there's something that you don't have. <laughs> Uh, can you post that in the in the Facebook group? Because there are <laughs> yeah. some people that come in there and they're uh, feisty, feisty yeah. to say the least. So <laughs> just complaining, and that's okay. Over. No, hey, yeah. but that's that's okay because everybody <laughs> everybody's entitled to their opinion for sure. Yeah. And we we want to give everybody all the features that they ask for, and it's in due time. You know, we can only handle so much, but yeah. Um, that's, I mean, I don't think I've ever thought about, I guess I'm someone who I work with what I have. Um, I'm trying to think of what would, be, what I, what would be helpful that doesn't already exist. Um, maybe, and see, that's, I hate to say this because I'm like, there probably is, and I just don't know how to use it yet. Maybe like the reporting, if there was, I feel like the, the reporting could use some improvement to be a little more user friendly. Um I think it shows like the basics, um right. like revenues. Um so like for example, like referrals, we can't track them properly because people don't use them properly. So <laughs> like people aren't sending referrals to their friends where it it's the system is tracking them. It's like they'll just tell the friend to call us and then the friend will call us 
And mm-hmm. it's like, we'll honor that referral, but we have to do it on like a manual back end. Um, so I, I would love to, if there was a way, and this is probably not even like a system thing, but if there was a way for me to just figure out how to track how many customers a certain customer referred to us, um, you know, in an automated way versus having to manually keep track, being that they don't use it the proper way, um, that may be helpful. But I don't know. Like I said, I don't know that may be something that like they would have to use the system in order for you guys to actually have something right. to track. Properly. I mean, again, it's it's hard if they kind of send them a, a a link to to sign up, and they might call you off of somebody else's right. phone, like their their significant other's phone or their spouse's right, phone, right. and and now you can't track that. Yeah. So I know the report section is going to be revamped, and and we already have that written down that it's going to be more extensive and I'm sure referrals are going to be in there as well. If not, we will put that in there. Um, yeah. So for how we operate and what we do, I'm, I'm satisfied with the, um, you know, the fun, the, the functionality that's available right now. I can't think of, I can't think of anything else that I'd want right now. Awesome. Final question here. Mm-hmm. advice what advice would you give i would say this is my second to last question so what advice would you give to somebody who's listening in who is on the fence or who just you know stumbled upon this and is maybe now thinking about starting something yeah um i would i would say that you know i I recommend everyone try, like if it's something that they're interested in pursuing, they want to, you know, maybe create some financial freedom. They want to eventually walk away from their nine to five. Um, They want to do something that's going to be profitable in the long run. Um, I would absolutely say this is the best way to go about it. Um, You know, I, you just, but your outcome is going to be based on the work that you put in. So it's like, if you, Give if you put your all into making creating this business and making sure it succeeds, like the results are going to show for themselves. Like if you go in, you know, doing kind of like a half-ass job and and just being focused on the money and not, you know, caring about the customers that you're dealing with, it's not going to succeed. Um, but if you go in with with transparency and and integrity. And, you know, actually care about the people you serve, actually care about the staff that's working under you, like it will flourish. Like I have no doubt that if you treat people right and do things right and, you know, make your customers feel good about the service you offer and make sure that the service that you offer is top notch, high quality, like this business will take you beyond your wildest dreams. Um, but you have to put in that work. You have to be consistent. You have to be focused and disciplined. And most importantly, you have to continue to learn along the way. Absolutely. My final question, and this is just overall everything. Are you happy? I am. <laughs> I am. I'm definitely happy. I'm I'm happy that I started this business. Um, I'm happy with the progress we've made thus far. I'm happy with where we are at this moment in time. Um, I'm happy with the customers that we have. I'm happy with my staff. Um, you know, we may kind of ah during the week, but overall, they're great people. They're very hardworking people. You know, I feel comfortable um, with them. I, you, you know, I try to, like, especially around the holidays, I try to assist in any way, give them bonuses. Um I, I am happy. I, I'm very satisfied with the state that we're in as a business, um, as far as my customers, as well as my staff. Um, I'm We're in a good place right now, and I'm, I'm happy and looking forward to seeing how we continue to grow. Amazing. It's three words, and yet so overlooked in, in everybody's day-to-day lives that everybody's got stuff going on, you know, and now you're adding on to it, becoming a business owner, a small business owner, and you've got 
other people's livelihoods depending on you and how you're gonna handle yourself with them and just the overall everything that comes with the business so you got to kind of sit back and ask yourself from time to time like am i actually happy with everything not just the business but am i happy in my personal life am i happy in my professional life am i happy in my whatever you know if you can as long as you answer truthfully then yes <laughs> it'll give you a huge outlook on on the future and maybe it'll it, it'll give you perspective on what you need to change and and maybe you don't need to change anything yeah you know? yeah as long as you are happy and going forward that's all anybody can ask for absolutely well yeah <laughs> my sincerest congratulations to you, you and your business so i mean incredible incredible things the more we've talked and you know realizing today that you've hit this number after a year and a half losing one of the busiest days of the week and just the way you handle yourself with everything that you do it just huge 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 congratulations thank and you. thank you of giving me the pleasure to interview you on this podcast because i've learned so much and it makes me want to level up my game tenfold yeah. now <laughs> and i feel like that's what everybody needs everybody yeah. needs everybody needs a push and it'll come from the point where you least expect it you know absolutely um I do these podcasts to learn about you guys and your businesses and and to see how we can help the next generation of business owners get started and get going. But I'm learning something new every single time and that's what makes it all worth it. So thank you for your time. Okay. It's been a pleasure and thank we you. will get you on in the next coming years and See how many cities you've overtaken yes, by that. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, I was really looking forward to just kind of telling someone our story and the details and how we got to where we are. So I really, really appreciate it. Um, thank you. Thank you yeah. so much. Of course, I know that this interview is definitely going to inspire a lot of current business owners. And I know, I know for a fact that it's going to start a lot of new businesses because yes. of your story and your drive and determination from it. So thanks again. Hey!